Hello guys and welcome back with Hearth and Home here. It's time to check out the new buildables and I have to say I'm really happy with the items we've got. Between them and the following tips, you'll find it super easy to build your dream home in Valheim. And for this, I will do a time lapse of the build. You can see it in the background now or in the foreground. And we'll take moments out of this to show you some of the great tips that I used whilst uh, developing this. So starting off, I've got to work flattening out the ground and placing core wood as a reference for the walls. I then start digging out the ground because for this, I wanted a really large cellar. And I didn't want this to be shown from the outside, so it was really important for me to have the, the, the rocks on the outer side. So as you can see, I've dug out the lower section first of all, and then I also wanted the stone walls, so for that I also made sure that the dugout bits were straight rather than rugged. I then floored the cellar and added a little bit of trimming, which you can see around the side for detail. This is actually a great tip for adding just a little bit of depth to your build, which really does stand out versus the boring plain uh, floors. Now next up we need to plan the main build, so I recommend keeping to straight walls here where possible to make roofing easier later on. At this point you want to plan the layout with core wood up to the second floor if you're going to use that, and once the house has taken shape, I highly recommend that you cover it with a roof even if it's only temporary to save you from the rain damage and having to repair it later on. Which is exactly what I should have done here. Now after failing to heed my own advice, I floored the rest of the house, finishing the upper roofing joints before covering it with the roof. Now next, it's time to work on the walls, and as you can see, I've used a very simple door to give me more snapping points on the outer walls. This, like the trimming used earlier, allows us to add extra depth to the build, which works spectacularly well with the new hearth and home buildables, specifically the dark wood joints, they look great. On the other side of the build, I've added a lower stone foundation on the tower section to give it a much more grounded and strong look, and the variety really works well together. It's always important to play around with the different combinations of materials and not use one in excess over the others. The next thing that we'll focus on is the tower wall section specifically. Now I'll use the doors again to add depth, but I don't want to use too much dark wood as it might ruin the overall aesthetic and look too busy. Therefore, I use it relatively sparingly. Though you can decorate the walls, I much prefer to add detail specifically to the window areas. These are great focal points and are a great way to add that little bit of an accent to your builds. And feel free to combine different wood types to create the various frames for the windows, then clip in the dark wood to add that finer detail. One thing I always feel that I have to do with my builds is, once I'm set on a particular style of window for example, that I need to keep it for all the other sections of this building. But that's not the case, always play around with the different styles. As with most houses, there are different windows used throughout. So play around with them, make larger bay windows or smaller ones which are more detailed. They can really add to the atmosphere and make it feel more homely. As you can see here. Now at the top of the tower I wanted to use a little bit of glass and chose to combine this with the little iron fences. It's the tiniest of details, but I love the look of it and I also use that later on. And I can only hope that down the line we will actually have paints or dyes that we can use for the glass to make stained glass windows or coloured walls in Valheim. Now I specifically didn't want this home to feel uh, military-esque, but wanted to use those gorgeous dark wood doors that we've just received, so I partnered it with decorated windows to make it look less daunting. I then added glass to the windows and I'm really happy with how it turned out before moving on to the rest of the walls. Now the front needed to be relatively clear, so all I did was add a little bit of fencing using core wood around the outside. We then move inside, and at this point I wanted to partner those cliffs with stone blocks and arches to really add some nuances. 
I feel this really works well, especially when we added the necessary trimming to make it really pop. Once that was done, we added the fireplace and chimney, and when building massive chimneys from the ground floor up, don't feel the need to close it off from the rest of the house. The next thing that you can actually do is use the new metal grates to create a little guardrail and make it a second floor fireplace. This is great for adding extra light to the build without throwing tons of torches into the house, and it looks great especially partnered with those new arches. With the shell of the house more or less finished, we can actually work on the details and the furniture. Now these are aspects that are what make great houses stand out from the rest of the houses. And there are some really great techniques that we'll talk about to really blow your friends' minds. And I'm not only talking about furniture, but before we place down the table, let's build a banister to the cellar, just to give it a little bit of protection from anyone falling down. And we shall then add the table and chairs where we shall eventually place a banquet. Another thing that we're going to do here is add a few cooking stations to give it a sense of what it's going to become. This isn't going to be everything, we will add more later, but one of the things I love doing is adding a little sideboard for prepping food. And the great thing that you can do about this is actually place storage units underneath. These chests are nicely hidden away so you aren't actually aware of just how much storage is within the building. Thanks to Hearth and Home we can actually add the little shutters as well to this to make it a little cupboard and these work perfectly in your kitchen and really elevate your build altogether. Our next stop is going to be the cellar. Now the intention is to make it look lived in with plenty of brewing barrels and storage, including a personal crafting room and treasury. Now I love the low ceiling in here and I've added the barrels and as well as a little serving station and table. And once the potions are brewed, we'll actually add these to the stands. Now you can create platters with the wooden shields that you've seen me just do it here and then add extra item stands to them to add the other objects such as tankards or food to them. And they really do look great. The next stop will be the treasury and it's going to be relatively simple. A little bit of decoration plus a place to store my treasure along with a small armory. We then move into the crafting room and here I've combined the crafting table with the wooden planks to make it look a little more detailed and unique. I've also added a little shelf and new signs to create the suggestion of books. And we will talk about signs later on as they're pretty OP when it comes to decorating. But to make this feel more lived in, you can also add loose items and sometimes it can take a bit of work to get them into the right position. But generally speaking, they will stay loose after you've chucked them out so you can walk past them without too, wor too many worries. Now against the back wall, I've also used yellow mushrooms to create a light effect using item stands. I then part covered them and this can add some great detail and atmosphere to your builds and it works with anything that glows. And from here, I'm going to be adding stalls on top and I will stack them to create a bottle rack just in general, a great technique to use when it comes to decorating your builds is to repurpose what items we've been given. And I do this all the time. Take for example now, in the upstairs area I'm using the back side of the signs to create wooden panels. It's a little finicky but creates a very clean finish. I then moved on to the bedroom where I placed a fine bed and then used the wooden beams to create a four poster. And I also added a stool as a bedside table and some red curtains for the balcony before creating a dresser with storage beneath as well as a shelving unit. Next we return to the kitchen area where I've added more signs as wall panels alongside the finer dark wood um, detailed walling which I think looks great together. I've also added the small floor pieces to create a really clean finish on the ceiling as well uh, with it being nice and smooth rather than having little beams sticking out. 
This, combined with the shelving, the oven, and another wine rack, really adds to the kitchen atmosphere, especially alongside the food which I've now added to this area, and also the dining area, and as you can see, adding all of these to the platters really does make it feel a lot more lived in. And I then finished off the upstairs area with a little seating area in the second part of the tower, and then above this, I've also added another map strategy post in the top of the tower, which is complemented by its own shelving unit and little throne area. Lastly, I added to the outside area with a little bit of decoration, nothing too uh, vast as this was mainly uh, to highlight the inside stuff, but obviously there is a compulsory hot tub as well as various plants. Overall, I feel the new additions to Hearth and Home really complement the older build items and I'm really looking forward to what they bring us next. But if you are hungry for more great decoration tips, why not check out my other guide on how to decorate like a pro in Valheim, which includes some great techniques that I forgot to mention in this video. But that is all we have time for in this video. If you did like it, please do drop a thumbs up and obviously if you want to see more Valheim content, make sure to subscribe. And special thanks does go to our amazing supporters, most notably our Solar Eclipse patrons The Calamity and Cerebral Tag, as well as James Irwin, as well as our Lunar Eclipse patrons Dixie Chris and Lord of July, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Papa Snoozy. Anyway guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.